Hi there and welcome back to Valley Por Vida. Now before the break we talked about how much us dog owners are usually walking uh, our pet uh, per year when it comes to our furry friends uh, and that was in honor of National Pet Month. But now we're taking a look at other observances for this month of May. So according to the nationalmonthcalendar.com, uh, May also marks National Mental Health Awareness Month. Now this is your chance to really press the pause button on life and just notice all the things around you that maybe you haven't noticed or haven't taken the chance to notice in a while. I'm talking your family, platonic and work-life relationships, your goals, your dreams, life plans, and of course your self-care. The calendar outlines uh, that May also is Global Employee Health and Fitness Month. So even though you may be stuck in an office all day, it's still a good idea to just think of new ways that you can get in your steps and keep your heart rate going even while sitting at your desk for eight hours or more. Maybe consider going for a slow walk outside the office building or in the hallway just for 10 minutes or so or stand up and just walk to the lounge and back, you know, just to get in some extra steps. Honestly, even just stepping outside to get some fresh air and sunlight for just five minutes can really do wonders when it comes to exercising regularly throughout your day. So definitely just give it a try. And if you're a fan of good old barbecue, then you might be happy to know that the month of May is also dedicated to just that. Whether you decide to pick up uh, you know, some at your local restaurants or just fire up the pit yourself at home, you're sure to enjoy a hearty meal. And what better way to work off those extra barbecue calories than with a bike ride? May is also a great time to get in some exercise with a nice cycle throughout your neighborhood or hey, even over on the island. I know it's been a bit hot lately, but you know, just take, you know, the water, take in the sights, uh, the sun, oh, take your sunscreen rather, and of course you'll be bound for an adventure. But whether you ride a bike over there with pedals or one that goes with gas, you've got to be careful while you're on the roads and streets and riding pathways on anything. The month of May is also National Motorcycle Awareness Month, which means if you're in your car riding, um, you know, maybe the expressway or the frontage, then just look out for motorists on motorcycles. And if you're the one on a motorcycle, well, just please be sure to, you know, follow all driving rules appropriately and just help keep others safe um, as well as yourself when you're on the road. It definitely goes both ways. And please, 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 if you're on a motorcycle anywhere, don't forget to wear the proper safety gear and attire. And since we're on the subject of staying safe, how about we talk a little bit about what we can do in the event of a natural disaster. Even with meteorology, uh, you know, we might not always see something coming and it's in those instances to just be prepared as best as possible. Luckily, we're able to share some helpful hurricane preparedness tips uh, from Generac. You know, it just ties in perfectly in time for hurricane season rapidly approaching. It's just, you know, a precaution to make sure that you're covered in the event of a sudden strong storm or even a power outage. And there are six helpful tips that their team wants us to be sure that we don't overlook. Good morning, Kyle Robbie, President of Consumer Power at Generac Power Systems. I'm excited to talk to you today about hurricane preparedness and being ready for storms as we enter the storm season of 2022. Um, preparing for hurricanes is pretty simple, but it does have to be thoughtfully done. Um, there's some really simple things that you can do before the storm season. Have water, have perishable food, um, be ready to spend a couple days inside your home with those basic essentials that you absolutely need um, to get by day by day. Uh, the other things that you absolutely think should think about is as the storm comes, um, you want to talk about and talk to your family about, are my electronic devices charged, right? Do I have all of the electronics needs that my life has really come to depend upon ready to go um, if the storm were to happen? You also want to start thinking about, um, should I photograph my home? Uh, you never know what's going to happen and you want to have a good record of everything that's inside your home uh, to make sure that if something were to be damaged, you've got picture of it, you've got a video of it, so you know what has to be replaced um, if you have to talk to insurance companies. Last but not least, um, as you think about the power needs, um, if the power should go out, um, there are a lot of options, but whatever option you have, whether it's a portable generator, a standby generator, even battery backup, make sure it's fueled up, make sure you've started it, make sure it's charged, make sure it's ready to do what you actually purchased it for 
um, so that your house is ready to go just in case. There are actually quite a few options and they've grown over the years. Um, I think the most common option that someone has available is a portable generator and, and many people own them already. Um, those portable generators um, are great. Again, you want to make sure you're prepared. You want to make sure you've started them before the season. But as you go into the storm, make sure you've got gasoline, right? Um, they're going to run anywhere between six and ten hours on one tank of gas. Have another, um, another gas can ready to go so that should it happen or should you need it to run for a longer period of time, that you're set to go. There are also standby options. So your standby option sits on the side of the home, it runs on natural gas, and you don't have to worry about gasoline, right? It runs the entire time or the duration of the outage. The last option um, that's out there is battery backup. Um, for those that have been um, installed systems that have solar and they're backing up power, again, you wanna make sure that that system is full at the time of the storm coming in. So make sure that you've got it set um, to be fully charged. But all three of those options are great options to get you through um, at a time where the storm comes in and the power does get knocked out. Well, I would say the number one thing is um, no matter what type of generator it is, um, you never want to run that generator inside or inside of a covered space like a garage where any of the exhaust or fumes could get in the house. Safety is always number one. Um, and you want to have that outside. But you do want to have a plan. Is there a covered area? Is there a tent? Is there an area that is, is less susceptible to rain and water where you could run that portable generator? A standby generator, you don't have to worry about any of those at all. It's designed to run in the storm. It's designed to run in the rain. Um, but overall, um, I would say make sure that if I'm running a portable generator, keep it outside and keep it away where it's safe. So as we learned, remember to photograph your possessions, uh, purchase supplies ahead of time, you know, keep a generator handy and ready to go if possible. And of course, you don't have to always evacuate if you don't feel that's what's best, but it is a good idea to have a plan in place, so definitely keep that in mind. Of course, there are always other things that you can do um, to be sure that you and your loved ones are prepared for any natural disaster as best as possible. So let's go ahead and break down some of those things right now. You've probably heard by now, uh, but having an emergency kit packed and just ready to go can definitely come in handy. But what are you supposed to pack in one? Well, according to Nationwide.com, first things first, <laughs> make sure you have plenty of water ready to go. It's literally a lifeline. Next, you're going to need food like canned veggies and protein bars, you know, something that's just not going to spoil very quickly and can help sustain you. You also need flashlights with plenty of batteries and it's a good idea to have a crank or battery powered radio for safekeeping. You can of course pack a map too because even in today's modern world we might experience a situation in which we might not be able to access our GPS. And of course the site says that depending on your situation you might also need things like pet food, baby food, medication, your eyeglasses, your contact solution, dry clothes, blankets, you get the point. Now according to Traveler's Com. It's also a good idea to communicate where you're going to be with your loved ones ahead of time. So for example, tell your family that if there's ever a fire in the house, then the plan is for everyone to run outside and meet at the corner of the street or maybe by the mailbox is what you choose. Just something so that everyone knows what to do. And be sure to collect emergency materials uh, for just different kinds of emergencies. Of course, we talked about the emergency kit, but you might also want to consider things like plywood, sandbags, waterproof tarps. The site even says it's a good idea to make sure that your vehicles are gassed up. And hey, you, you may even want to pack, you know, uh, or to make sure that you have some gas cans filled up and ready to go um, just somewhere safe at home. And of course, don't forget that you need car chargers and battery packs for your electronic devices too, so that you can, you know, re, uh, recharge those as well as other devices. And we can't forget about making sure that our home is prepared too, right? Not just us. The site says, that, for example, to be cautious of your patio furniture, your grills, your flower pots, and just other things that might easily be swept up with the wind. Maybe try securing those things or just putting them inside when you know that a disaster is on its way. 
And regarding your utilities, you know, just try shutting off the water if need be, or maybe unplugging unnecessary items to minimize the risk of damage while you're away. Really just any little small thing can, that you can think of will definitely help. Lastly, despite how much preparing we do ahead of time, it's important to note that sometimes things just happen and that's okay. The important thing is that you make the effort and the rest is beyond our control. Just remember to stay calm in any situation as much as you can be and let it be. As long as you planned as much as you could already, then you should be good to go. All right, with that in mind, thanks so much for joining us today and hearing us out. And be sure to tune in again next time because we're going to have a lot more in store for you. But for now, don't forget to follow our team on social media for exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks of what we've got coming up and for your chance at your comment or even your question to be featured on air. And as always, you can visit valleycentral.com to rewatch some of today's favorite segments. We've got all that and so much more next time on Valley Por Vida. We'll see you then.